There was once a world-renowned dim sum restaurant called Steam Up. It was the very first restaurant to achieve the three gold ingot status and that restaurant was known for its most popular dim sum. They had juicy shrimp dumplings, tender meat dumplings, soft and fluffy barbecue meat buns, the most flavorful sticky rice, and exotic phoenix claws. Now after traveling from faraway lands and waiting patiently in line, it is finally time for you and your fellow magical creatures to be seated at the table and feast. Here's the problem. Steam Up has a limited quantity of their most popular dim sum. So get ready to compete and devour the most food as possible because whoever eats the most and leaves with the full stomach will win. Hello, welcome back to the Dice Tower. My name is Tim Chuan and I make board game cinematics. Today, we are gonna learn how to play Steam Up by Hot Banana Games, who is the sponsor for today's video. So here is how you set up the game. First off, turntable goes at the center of the table. Now this is called a feast zone indicator and you're gonna look at the dot shown here for the number of players. We'll set up for a two player game and put the feast zone indicator so that it aligns with the orange lines on the board. Now you also wanna rotate the circular platform in the middle so all the arrows will line up with the arrows on the board. Make sure everyone is sitting in a way that they're facing a different feast zone. The feast zone being the space between the two lines of the feast zone indicator. Then you can place the scoreboard next to the turntable with the steamer counter on the player count. Shuffle the fortune cards and place them here on the fortune deck zone. After that, shuffle the fate cards and deal only 18 in the face down stack on the fate deck area. The rest can go back into the box. A quick note, if you wanna have a less confrontational game, you can actually take out the fate cards and the fortune cards that have this symbol in the bottom right corner. From there, place all the food tokens and the lucky die near the turntable. Now each player gets two random animal boards and picks one to play with. You also wanna give each person their corresponding animal score marker and you can put them in the VIP guest zone on the scoreboard. First player gets the first player marker, which is the chili oil token. And the last few steps, we're gonna place all the dim sum pieces in the bag and divide the 18 steamers into three groups of six each. You'll draw two random dim sum from the bag and put them in each of the first six steamers. Then you're gonna draw three dim sum and put them in the next six and four in the last six steamers. Mix up all these steamers and randomly stack three steamers in each of the six slots on the turn table. You now wanna look at your animal board and see how many of those food tokens and fortune cards that they start with. Now you can choose the food tokens that you take from the supply unless your board specifically states the types of tokens. Like for instance, Silver Spoon here starts with three different resources and three fortune cards. Now there's also an advanced steamer setup where instead of randomly picking out tokens and steamers, players can actually take turns filling in the steamers and then placing them on the turntable. If you want that mode, it is available in the game. So now let me go ahead and teach you how to play steam up. Now dim sum means touching the heart. So the goal of this game is to score the most hearty points or HP. Here's what you're doing on your turn. You're gonna take two different actions in any order and there are a total of five actions available. The first action is to gain one token where you just gain one food token from the supply, simple as that. Action number two is to draw one fortune card and rotate. Now we all started with a certain number of fortune cards, right? All based on what's listed on our player board. So this action literally just has you draw one more card and then rotate the turntable like an actual dim sum feast. You can rotate it 90 degrees in any direction you want. From there, action number three is to play a fortune card and rotate the turntable once again. All you do is follow the listed effect. So I can play this fortune card that lets me discard another fortune card from my hand and score two hearty points right off the bat. I'll go ahead and discard this one, move my dragon up two points, and then rotate the turntable 90 degrees. The fourth action is to exchange two fortune cards for one food token of your choice. And the final action, action number five, is to purchase a steamer. You wanna look at the dim sum tokens in the steamer, and that's gonna tell you the cost to pay for it. Now, in the instant I mentioned purchasing a steamer, you might be wondering, well, what's the whole point of purchasing these steamers? Well, actually, using these dim sum mini tokens, you're gonna to place them on your player board. And from there, it's gonna score you points. So this is how purchasing a steamer works. You can only purchase steamers at the very top of the stacks within your designated feast zone. Then you have to pay for all of your dim sum that's in the steamer. You can't do some and split it. Here, I wanna buy two meat dumplings and one barbecue meat bun. So I turn in these tokens and take the top steamer off. Then you take the dim sum and put it on your playboard that matches the row of that dim sum. 
Notice how there are numbers in each circle that tells you how many points you instantly score. So I'll get one point for the barbecue meat bun and three points for the meat dumplings, making it a total of four points. Lastly, after purchasing a steamer, you move the steamer counter down by one on the steamer track. When this reaches zero, the game is gonna end at the end of this round. Now we have a couple more things to talk about and then we'll go over end game. Now food tokens, there is no limit to how many you can have and they're also available for everyone to see. Now fortune cards also have no limit to how many you can have, but make sure you keep them secret from other players. If fortune cards ever run out, you can just reshuffle the discard pile. And steamers, you wanna rotate these not only so you can access different dim sum on the table, but also to take away dim sum from other players and maybe move certain ones that they're looking for out of their zone. Now let's go ahead and recap and figure out exactly what we're doing on our turn. So we have to perform two actions mandatory out of five possible actions and you can perform them in any order you want. The five possible actions are to gain one token, to draw one fortune card and rotate the turntable 90 degrees, play one fortune card and rotate the table, exchange two fortune cards for one food token, and number five is purchase a steamer. Once everyone has had a turn, the round is over and the fake card is revealed from the deck and its effects are resolved. Now these fake cards act as unique events. For example, here it says that each player rolls a lucky die and gains the result. Now please note that these fake cards are not drawn in the first round, they're only drawn after the first round is over. And from there, end game is triggered once the entire fake deck has run out or once the steamer counter has reached zero. From there, everyone finishes their current round making sure that everyone has had an equal number of turns. To score end game hardy points, each player gets one point for every two fortune cards in their hand. Face up cards in front of you do not count. Each player is also gonna lose one hardy point for every two leftover food tokens in front of you as well. Whoever has the most hardy points will be declared the winner and if there's a tie, the player who collected the most dim sum in total will win. And if there's a double tie, then everyone will share victory. That my friends is how you play Steam Up. Thank you so much to Hot Banana Games and for everyone watching this video and I hope you all have a wonderful feast.